even you space geniuses don't know everything. Just a pinprick, that's all. Just a pinhole in your shiny spacesuit, and you'd explode like a kid's balloon. Even you space geniuses don't have a test for everything. You're gonna be a satellite, boy. A little star out there in infinity. All alone. You gotta listen to me, hon. You're wrong about last night. Any night. <laughs> Theater 5 presents Incident at Apogee. (laughs) So help me, Charlie, it's the truth. If I hadn't gone that extra orbit, she'd never have married me. Oh, don't believe a word of it, Charlie. I was all his before he ever crawled into a capsule. Oh, that's news to me. Well... A girl has to have some secrets. Uh, it must have been pretty hairy in the old days. Old days? That 101 orbit flight I just referred to occurred less than three years ago. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I uh, I didn't mean to imply... And let's it. drop that sir stuff, shall we? When we get up there tomorrow, it'll be just the two of us. Charlie and Pappy, okay? Okay. Pappy. <laughs> <laughs> How about another cup of coffee, Charlie? Well, I don't know. Uh, should I, Pappy? Oh, can't hurt you. You won't sleep tonight anyway. Uh, None of them do the night before their first flight. Scared, Charlie? (laughs) Why should I be scared when I got the best man in the space business to pilot me? Uh, I bow as low as these creaking old bones will permit. Uh, And who could be scared after such a wonderful dinner? (laughs) I'll just curtsy. It was awfully kind of you to have me. At least we could do. Man ought to have a good dinner his last night on Earth. Happy. You make it sound so final. Could be. With what he's got ahead of him. First man to leave a capsule in space. Oh, I wonder what it will be like floating all alone up there. I'll tell you when I get back. Promise? Promise. Honey, what you need is a wife to worry about you and to worry about. How come you're still a bachelor? Oh, I don't know. I've been busy with other things. I never gave marriage much thought. Well, it's time you did. There's nothing out there in space quite like a good woman back on Earth. Is there, Pappy? Not that I know of. Uh Uh-oh. The blowtorch. I'll get it. Colonel Sedgwick speaking. This is Control, Colonel. T-minus 730. Time to suit up. Thank you. We're on our way. Time. Time. Well, here we go again. No. Here we go. Like to change places? Just once? Uh, You ought to be used to this by now, sweetie. I am. My part, you never get used to. (laughs) Maybe I'd better wait out in the car. You take care of yourself, handsome. And come back in one piece. The women of America need you. There aren't enough like you to go around. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, thanks for dinner. Hey, wait for Pappy. Honey, aren't you going to... Uh, You know something, Sue? What? That little... Farewell speech you just made to the kid. What about it's it? It's the same speech you made to me the night before my first flight. Word for word. Bye, baby. It's now T minus 223. Launch will be at 0400. Poser grade rockets will put you into orbit at T plus 5 minutes and 30 seconds. You'll then be at your closest point to Earth on this ride, at an altitude of 480 miles. What will our apogee be, our farthest point from Earth? On the order of 30,000 miles. That's on the outer fringe of the Earth's magnetic field. No problem. Earth's gravity will keep you in orbit. Uh, Just barely. Uh, Do I take an order from the project officer to leave the capsule and execute the free flight maneuver? No, I won't give the order. That'll be at the discretion of Colonel Sedgwick as command astronaut. Uh, this is the part that always gets me. What's that, Pappy? Waiting. Sweating it out, stuffed into this miserable capsule while they're getting her ready to go. <laughs> well, you sure don't show it. Capsule from control. Capsule Pegasus from control. Pegasus 4, Colonel Sedgwick. We're ready to connect you with Mrs. Sedgwick, sir. Thank you, but that won't be necessary this time. But, sir... I said goodbye to Mrs. Sedgwick last night. Well, let me have that phone. Pegasus 4, project officer here. Yeah, Harry... Control read you negative on last transmission. 
Affirmative. Negative is correct. I didn't want to take the call. Is everything all right, Pappy? Sure. There's still time to scrub the flight. There's nothing wrong, nothing at all, Harry. Now let's get on with it. I get the jitters up here. Roger. You're now T minus 15 seconds. Good luck. Thanks, Harry. 14, 13, 12, As I used to say, kid, 11, this is it. 10, Seat belt 9, fastened. No 8, smoking sign on. 7, As they also 6, used to say, A OK. Lift off. Roger. I have a lift off. And the clock is operating. Roger, loud and clear. Pegasus 4 is underway. Pegasus 4 to Earth Command. Pegasus 4 to Earth Com. Reading you loud and clear, Pegasus. Pegasus 4 reporting in orbit. That's how it shows here, Pappy. May we have your orbit checklist at this time? Roger. Retro attitude command. Off. Retro rocket fire. Off. Antenna fairing release. On. Pilot abort. Off. And let's keep it that way. <laughs> we'll try, kid. We'll try. That's it, Earthcom. Orbit checklist completed. Now going on auto control. Roger. How is it? No quiver at all on yaw, pitch, or roll. Holding very nicely. Pretty good equipment, isn't it? The best. Well, have a nice ride. Why not? Let us know if you need anything. Wouldn't think of doing business with anyone else. Roger. A nice bunch down there, kid. I say we have a grand group on the ground, Charlie. Huh? What's the matter with you? The view. Would you look at that view? Yeah, it's quite a sight. First time out. How do you feel? Great. Just great. The view, it's too much. Hey, look down there underneath. It's that island. Bermuda. Already? Great place for a honeymoon, Bermuda. I'll bet. Yeah. That's where I took Sue after we were married. After I'd broken a hundred orbits. When I was the glamour boy of the space program. When I was where you are now. <laughs> what are you talking about? I never went a hundred orbits. I haven't even gone one yet. Yeah, but you're tomorrow's hero. Because you'll be the first man ever to leave a spacecraft and float outside in emptiness. The fellow was right when he said space was young man's business. And already it's splitting into specialties. Well, I can't help that. I, I just do as I'm told. Yeah, you just keep that up, kid. No room for individual initiative in space. Up here, teamwork counts. You can be the big man when you get back to Earth. Well, what are you driving at, Pappy? What do you think of my wife, Charlie? Sue? Yeah, that's what her friends call her. Well, I hope I'm considered a friend. Oh, I'm sure you are. You didn't answer my question. Well, I, uh, I, I don't know her very well. Don't you? But I think she's a marvelous person. And I know she's a marvelous cook. Yeah, she seems to think a lot of you, too. Well, how could she? We only... She could. Look here, Pappy. What are you insinuating? Nothing. Forget it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I get like this sometimes on a tough mission. You know, depressed. The great Pappy Sedgwick, depressed? Ever hear the phrase, the captain hates the sea? Yeah. Well, that's me, doubled in space. I don't believe it. That's been a well-kept secret. Until now. It still is. It had better be. But look, Pappy, if it's bad, I mean, there's there's no point in going through the exercise. We could... Abort the mission? Yes, if you... You'd be the loser. The world would think you chickened out. They'd never guess an old space pro like me had lost his touch or his nerve. Well, I'll take my chances on that rather than see you go through with it. If Don't you have worry, any... Don't worry, I'll fly the mission. I'll get you there. You'll have your big moment. But, Pappy, I really think On that... this mission, I think. You take orders. That clear? Yes, sir. This is Earthcom. This is Earthcom. Come in, Pegasus 4. This is Pegasus 4. And proceeding according to flight plan. Apogee will be reached in 12 minutes. 
will conduct pre-flight experiment at that time. On the first pass? It's at my discretion, Earthcom. You said so yourself. So I did, so I did. Good luck, Pappy. You too, Charlie. Thanks. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Well, there's a lady who wants to talk to you. I can't see anybody during the mission. Well, that's what I told her, but uh, she won't go away. I'm afraid that's your problem. No, sir, it's yours. She says she's the wife of the colonel you got about. Mrs. Sedgwick? Yes, sir. Oh, why didn't you say so? Send her in. Send her in. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Would you please come in? Oh, I'm sorry to bother you, Harry. I know how busy you must Not be. Not that busy, Sue. As a matter of fact, we just closed down transmission. Oh? Now, the boys are getting ready for the free flight exercise. Already? That's the way Pappy wants it. And I guess he's right. We had a textbook launch. Everything go. I know. I watched it on TV. Everything go but Pappy. What's that mean? Harry, I'm worried about him. Why? Just before liftoff, when I phoned, you told me he was too busy to talk. You weren't telling me the truth, were you, Harry? Well... The truth is, he wouldn't take the call. Isn't that right? Uh, well, now... Isn't it, Harry? Yes, that's right, Sue. He refused to take the call. He said he'd already said goodbye to you last night. Last night, he walked out and slammed the door in my face. What? Charlie was over for dinner. And, and, and Pappy got some kind of a wild idea that I'd go for the kid. <laughs> he ought to have his head examined. Yes, Harry. I think he should. Sue. I'm serious. Even you space geniuses don't have a test for everything. Maybe paranoia goes along with weightlessness. Or schizophrenia hides in the cramped couch of a capsule. I don't know. Do you? When I couldn't get through to him during the countdown, I was sure there was something seriously wrong. This is very alarming, Sue, but I don't know what we can do about it at this late date. I do. What? Let me talk to him. The ordered transmission cut off. Order it back on. You're the boss, aren't you? On the ground. He's head man in the spacecraft. Pegasus 4 to Earth Command. Roger, Pegasus. Let me talk to him. Pegasus 4, position report. Coming up to Apogee at an altitude of 30,550 miles. At, at this, this altitude, the, the Earth has taken on a, a bluish cast. And the sun and all the stars are untwinkling holes in the black firmament. And, uh, well, that... That is to say, all systems are still go. We are prepared to proceed with free flight exercise. Co-pilot is rigged with auxiliary rocket pack. Umbilical tether is connected, and we're standing by to open hatch. Are you reading me, Earthcom? Four square, Pegasus. This is the project officer. Yeah, Harry? Your wife's here, Pappy. She wants to talk to you. Say again, Earthcom. Your wife, Sue's here. She wants to talk to you. Stand by. I'll put her on the pipe. I'm not reading you, Earthcom. Pappy, listen. This is Sue. You're not getting through, Earthcom. Listen to me, hon. You've got to listen. You're wrong about last night. Any night. You're coming through faint and garbled, Earthcom. You're unreadable. Pappy, Pappy, you've got to believe me. Cut the channel, Charlie. But she's trying to tell you something, That's Pappy. an order, mister. Yes, sir. Pappy... Might have been important. Come on, let's get on with it. Suit pressure. Building. Coming up to 12 pounds per square inch. Mark. Roger. Cabin pressure. Dropping. Three, two, one. Mark. Cabin pressure zero per square inch. Roger. Transferring oxygen from cabin tanks to portable pack. You only got 20 minutes supply. I know. I don't expect to be out there half that long. Anyway, in case anything goes wrong, you'll pull me in by the umbilical tether. Sure, kid. Hatch open. Well, there it is, kid. Space. And it's all yours. Roger. Zero gravity. Zero pressure. Vacuum. <laughs> Makes you feel kind of funny, doesn't it? I feel okay. I mean, so close to infinity. Just a pinprick, that's all. 
Just a pinhole in your shiny spacesuit and you'd explode like a kid's balloon. Just a little pinhole. Makes you think. Yeah. Well, I better get over the side. Roger. Out you go. All right, now give a good push. Well, that isn't what they taught us at Houston. You just listen to old Pappy and shove real good. You want to get everything out of this exercise, don't you? Experience independent flight like you were a satellite yourself, then shove. Roger. But you hang on to that umbilical. Sure, kid. Don't you worry. So long. Pegasus 4 to Earthcom. I am ready with status report from Apogee. Pappy, honey, you, you, you've got to listen to me. Earthcom, this is Pegasus. Getting crosstalk on this frequency. Can you clear at your end? Pappy, for heaven's sake, that's your wife. I still do not read you loud and clear. Do you want a status report at this time? Roger, Pegasus 4. Proceed with your report. Cabin pressure, zero. Suit pressure, 14 pounds per square inch. Co-pilot has gone over the side with 20-minute oxygen supply. Co-pilot now in free flight outside capsule. Floating in space. 50 feet from capsule. At extreme reach of umbilical tether. Umbilical tether now disconnected. Co-pilot is now floating free all by himself. Oh, my God. Happy, what are you doing? He deliberately cut him loose from the capsule. <gasps> Happy. I can't get back. That's right, Charlie, my boy. You can't walk back, you can't swim back, and you can't fly back. You're just never coming back. Oh, no. You're going to be a satellite, boy. A little star. And maybe someday the astronomers will give you a name like Lady Killer or Carlos Minor, the wife stealer. Something appropriate like that. Something that'll tell the world why you're there. Because you're going to be there for a long time, boy. Meat keeps real good in a vacuum, you know. Charlie, can you hear me? Say if you can hear me. Roger, Earthcom. I read you. Your auxiliary rocket on your backpack. Use it. I got more thrust than you have, kid. Happy, don't. Firing maximum thrust. You'll blast yourself out of orbit. <laughs> You'll never catch me now, Charlie Lady Killer. <laughs> what is it, Harry? What's he done? You hear those rocket engines? Yes. Nearly a million pounds of thrust. Oh. They're ripping Pegasus Four loose from Earth's gravity. Earth calm. Earth calm. Roger, Charlie. He's gone. Just like that. All I can see is his afterburner. Like a little comet a long way off. Now it's gone out. And there are only the stars. What's happening, Harry? Tell me. Happy's put himself into another orbit. <gasps> around the sun. Forever. <laughs> Charlie... I read you, Earthcom. Are you... Are you comfortable? Yeah, sure. You're fine. You know there's nothing we can do for you, Charlie. <laughs> I know. You have less than 15 minutes of oxygen left. Yes, Charlie? The view. You ought to see this view.
Theater 5 has presented Incident at Apogee, written by William Ed Robeson and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Ralph Camargo, George Petrie, Joan Shea, Cliff Carpenter, Richard Hurd, and Jack Manning. Audio engineer Bill Sandreuter, sound technician Ed Blaney, script editor Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko, orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.